Hi everyone, my name is Rod Rojas and today we're going to talk about how to stop from wasting money on advertising. And the presentation is called 7 Easy Ways to Make Your Ads Pay Even If You Don't Know Anything About Advertising. So the most important thing obviously is you need a good product and sometimes some people get away with just having a, a good product and then that's it. The product advertises them. Um, now in today's uh, highly competitive environment, we really can't do that with most um, products. Um, but you need a good product. It doesn't matter how clever your advertising is. Uh, it doesn't matter how much you spend in advertising. You need a good product. And a good example of this was Trump University. Now, whether you like Trump or not, he um, we have to admit, he knows how to make money. He's a good businessman. And he has had many good products that have sold well. For example, in real estate and, uh, you know, golf courses and things like that. Casinos, I think he has also. So, um, the man has deep pockets. The man probably has some of the best advertising agencies in the world working for him. And even for him, it was impossible to keep Trump University afloat because it was just a bad product. Um, there were complaints all over the place. And, um, yeah, so it doesn't matter how powerful you are. It doesn't matter how clever your advertising is. It doesn't matter how much money you spend on advertising. You need a good product. And, um, yeah, there's no two ways about it. Uh, forget about branding. Um, the reason behind this is that the companies that do branding, let's say, for example, Coca-Cola um, or many other of those big, big companies, um, they are not only selling their product, but they're also selling their company to shareholders. So they are selling the stock of their company, right? So th the advertising looks very different when you're doing that and the amount of money needed to succeed at doing that is huge. Um, the branding that you need as, um, as a normal company, even if your company is reasonably big, is just an outstanding product and outstanding customer service, especially customer service. Um, you know, it goes from just answering your emails promptly and having courteous customer service, you would be surprised how bad customer service can be in many, many companies. Um, uh, for example, I have a, a uh, I live in Asia. Uh, I travel in Asia. I'm a copywriter. I write advertising. Um, and there is a company that I'm not going to mention their name, who, uh, for example, I can do my shopping in Canada or in the U.S. and have it shipped to them, and then they ship these items to me in Asia. And they are out of Washington State or something like that. And sometimes, like, they would receive my credit cards and send me a message in their platform, and then if I didn't answer, they would destroy my mail. And emails are free, and they wouldn't even send me an email. I would have to log into their platform to get the message. And if I didn't let them know on time, they would destroy my mail. I mean, this was unbelievable, right? Um, it's incredible that companies like that still survive and are around. Don't be afraid of being salesy. So... Um, if your product is great, it is your humanitarian duty to sell hard. Let's suppose that you are, I don't know, a cleaning company, right? And your cleaning is fantastic. And you know 
that pe when people hire you, they benefit highly. It's not just one more um, cleaning company, but you are excellent. And you can make their business better by keeping their premises extra clean. Then you shouldn't have any hang-ups about being salesy because you know that you're going to be benefit benefiting your, your customer. So what I would say, if you have a hang-up about being salesy, maybe it's because there are inefficiencies in your company. I'm not going to say that your product is bad, but maybe deep down inside you don't feel completely comfortable about calling yourself the best or one of the best or something like that and um yeah so that might be a um a good sign that you need to either stop having hang-ups about being salesy because you're offering a great product or okay wait a minute do I need to improve certain things in my company or do I need to improve th certain things about my my customer service and so on and so forth. It's an opportunity for growth. Don't try to look too polished or corporate. So corporate, looking corporate um, to consumers, even when you're talking B2B, business to business, it often looks expensive. Yeah. Now, if if it's an internal manager of a company buying services for another uh, company, like B two B internal, and they, um, how do I say this? They're not paying from their own pocket. It's such a big company that they're not paying out of their own pocket. Um, then maybe they do want something that looks corporate so that if the boss asks them, oh, why did you hire this advertising agency? Well, they were very well recommended. They're in this trades association or whatever. You know, you can back up your decision with normal metrics, you know, of, of, uh, of what an acceptable business is supposed to be like yeah but if you're if you're a business if you're running your own business or if you're running a business and you are it's small enough that you are talking to the ceo every day um you shouldn't really look too corporate um in your advertising the reason being that corporate advertising is boring is it's boring it's um bland it doesn't have a call to action usually it doesn't usually have sales it doesn't usually have any incentives it's just kind of you know we don't want to offend anybody and you can still have a very very clean looking company and a very professional looking company uh, and have advertising that is a little bit more daring, yeah? We're not talking disrespectful, not disrespectful, just, just you know, um, direct, direct advertising. Um, also, advertising that is easy to read. It has to be at fifth grade level. And this is not, how do I say this? It's not that you're looking down upon your customers and thinking that they're dumb. That's not it. The reason we do it this way is because when people are reading a uh, literature book, they're putting their entire attention into it, and they can handle more challenging language. But when people are reading an ad, they're reading it in passing. They're, you know, it probably pops up in their... Uh, Facebook feed, for example, or it, you know, or if they're reading a magazine, it just kind of happens without a warning, and they're not perhaps paying full attention. And if you're using big words and long sentences, and uh, you know, very uh, complex uh, ideas, then it's not going to go through. People are just going to, you know 
go forward into what they were trying to look at, you know, in their Facebook feed or whatever. They're just going to ignore you. So you can't, you have to be very easy to read and you can't be boring. You can't be boring and don't talk so much about you. Don't worry so much about your logo and your your company slogan. Those stupid, stupid slogans that nobody remembers. Um, just talk to the customer about their problem. Yeah, talk talk to them about how you can solve their problem. And if you do this, even if you don't hire me or hi, don't hire an advertising agency, you will be on the right track. Measure everything. When I say measure everything, I say if you put a billboard somewhere, how can you track the sales that are related to that billboard? Yeah? Or if you put a... I don't know, a poster in a subway car, right? I'm from Toronto, so a lot of people would put posters, pay a lot of money to have posters in the, um, in the subway, and then they would have no way of tracking that. So in that case, you would have to put in a phone number or a website that is dedicated to that per a specific ad or that specific campaign so that you know how many sales or how many leads are coming in because of that ad. If you're just throwing that in and giving them your regular customer service number, you might be able to know, oh, okay, we got an increase in sales or we got no sales at all increase. So maybe you have sort of like a, a, a primitive way of knowing whether the ad is working, but if you have, if you're running multiple different ads, you will never know exactly what is doing what, right? And when I say test everything, uh, I'm talking about A-B testing. So, for example, you test the same everything and then change one variable between, for example, two ads. So, let's say that you have two ads, uh, same picture, same size of ad. You spend the same amount of money on each ad, but maybe the headline is different. Or maybe everything else is the same, the headline is the same, but maybe one has, uh, has a picture and the other one has no picture. The other one has only text, you know, bigger text instead of the picture uh, added. Things like that. And when somebody in the company has an, has an opinion about advertising, saying, oh, this is too salesy, or oh, I don't think this is going to work, or oh, whatever, just test it. Opinions are a dime a dozen, and you really don't know for sure until you test it. Yeah, um, and testing nowadays is not so expensive. You can test online very cheaply. Position yourself in one field. So. Um, Basically, uh, I know a person who had a, um, a financial uh, uh, job in downtown Toronto, and she also had a de decoration business. And that's fine. If you want to have several businesses, that's fine. But she was putting everything in the same business card and putting... Uh, both businesses in the same website. Basically, it was a website about her, and then it talked about her two businesses. And I told her that she needed to somehow separate the two groups, groups of people, right? And not really mix them together. And her customers for her financial uh, job and her customers for her uh, decoration job. And people will, you know, they, they, they'll they say, no, I don't put people in a box. I never do that. Believe me, you do pe put people in a box. Everybody does that. Uh, we think of certain people as 
their profession or what they do for us or the place that they um, they play in our lives and we tend to put them in that box um, and when you have several boxes for a person then uh, people get confused a good example of this was the VW or Volkswagen Phaeton so Volkswagen is a well-known car brand very good cars but they're they're viewed as maybe not economy cars but family cars these are not luxury vehicles or at least that's not the image that we have of them and they came up with this car called the Phaeton that was more luxurious than a Rolls Royce or a Mercedes more expensive too I think and it was a huge sales failure because no CEO wants to be seen in a Volkswagen right because it's a it's a cheaper car it's a car driven by taxi cabs it's a car driven by you know soccer moms things like that so Lexus was a lot more uh, intelligent uh, or Toyota was more intelligent when they wanted a luxury car they created Lexus they created a different brand they gave them different biz buildings I mean they share sometimes the same lot but it's a different part of the building the um, sales area is more luxurious the service area is more, more luxurious everything is different for Lexus and you won't see any Toyota branding anywhere in the Lexus uh, business and that way the consumer is able to separate the two products and give them their proper positioning yeah this is very important so if your company does accounting but it also has I don't know a, a, a golf coaching uh, side you know because you love golf and whatever uh, no it, it doesn't work yeah offer value and create a list so um, it's important for your advertising especially at the beginning to be valuable in of itself um, and you do that by giving coupons or sales or a presentation like what I'm doing now um, this is uh, very valuable information for an entrepreneur and I give, I'm giving it away for free so that I can build a relationship with you yeah this is called lead generation advertising and that's what I specialize in um, and it's a way to create a relationship with your uh, prospective clients uh, right um, and by doing this you build a list of people that you can regularly deliver you know interesting content or um, sales or um, presentations whatever it may be and then one day when they need uh, someone when for example you need a copywriter you might remember oh there's this guy who gave me these presentations for free and who uh, you know seems like a, a knowledgeable person um, and so you're creating proof proof that you are a professional in the field right <coughs> so this is what we call lead generation advertising and it's different from buy now advertising buy now advertising is just advertising the product the price and buy it now and lead generation advertising just adds one step you know you give value for free build a community and then your customers will come from that community that you have built yeah so um, if this is interesting to you which I think it should be because it's much cheaper than buy now advertising um, your first consultation is only $9.99 of course this is not the price of a regular consultation regular consultations are at a normal price but the first consultation is at $9.99 and you say oh why isn't it free everybody gives a free consultation well 
I'm busy. And when you give a free consultation, uh, then you'll get a lot of people that are just tire kickers or they don't really own a business yet or they don't really have a, a uh, product yet. And that small fee, that $10, that $9.99 will weed out the people that first need to work on their business and first need to start selling something, first needs to have a profit, you know, uh, before they come to me. Yeah. So that's the reason for the $9.99. Okay, um, if you have any questions, I have an email. It's more sales or your money back at gmail.com. You can contact me there. And I also have a website, more sales or your money back.com. Okay, thank you.